Wait a minute. Have you heard the strange tales of the Whistler? I'm the Whistler. I may be the district attorney, but if my son is guilty, he can pay the penalty like anyone else. I'll prosecute him. Then, Blake, I'll start on you. Sunday night, and again, CBS presents The Whistler. I, The Whistler, know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, many secrets hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. And so I tell you tonight the unusual story of the weakling. Young Clyde Banning, son of District Attorney Banning, steps out of a nightclub following a gay New Year's Eve party. An expensive limousine pulls up to the curb and Clyde gets in. Clyde has done some careless driving lately, had his driver's license revoked, and is now forced to be driven about by Rawlins, the family chauffeur. Where to now, Mr. Benning? Let's go home, Rowling. Not yet, Clyde. Hey, look. What are you doing in here? I thought you were still in the club. I didn't think you even knew I was there. Oh, I saw you a couple of times. Why have you been avoiding me, Clyde? You know how it hurts me. What's happened? Take Miss Blake home, Rowling. No, I won't go home. I won't be brushed off like this without an explanation. You know how much I love you, Clyde, and I, I can't go on like this any longer. Please, this is no time to make a scene. Clyde, you know you love me. Let's get married right now, tonight. Please, let's not talk about it now. I will talk about it now. Rollins, pull up, please. I won't get out, Clyde. I won't. I'll drive, Rollins. You can take a cab home. You'll drive, but listen Go on, here. Rollins. I'll take Miss Blake home. Don't take me home, Clyde. I- I've got to talk to you. Please, drive down to the Ocean Highway. All right. All right, but cut out the melodrama. Have you changed so, Clyde? Why can't we get married? You know as well as I. My father is district attorney, and he's out to crack that graft situation wide open. He knows who the big boss of the racket is, and he's going to get his scalp. Send him to the pen. But what's that to do with us? You know that Jim Blake is the big boss. Your own father. But we have our own lives to live. If I married you, Dad would throw me out of my ear. What of that? We could get along. How? Your father won't have a dime when this is over. Besides, Dad is up for re-election. How would it look? D.A.'s son marries convict's daughter. I I thought you really loved me. But I've always liked you, Ellen, but it just won't work. It isn't fair to Dad. Then you don't want to marry me? I've told you how I feel about it. What a ridiculous fool I've been. Now, don't start that hysterical stuff I've hoped against hope that you weren't trying to get rid of me, but now I know. You're a low, spineless jellyfish. You didn't love me. You couldn't. Stop shouting. I won't stop. I wish everyone could hear me. You know what a despicable rotter you Shut are. Shut up! <laughs> no, stop it, you little fool! Ellen! Good Lord! Ellen! 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 Oh, Lord! Her fate! Ellen! Ellen, darling! Better get a doctor. Maybe she. No, shouldn't move her. Yes, that's it. Get help. Yes, Clyde, better get help. There, just ahead, the low lights of a service station. Hurry, Clyde. Maybe she's still alive. What's the trouble, Clyde? You're slowing down. Well, they they might think I did it. Think I pushed her out. She's dead. She must be. No one knows. Better drive on. You've passed it now, Clyde. You've really fixed things now. You should have stopped. Clyde's fear increases with every mile. He slips the car into the garage and hurries quietly to his room. But he doesn't sleep, not a wink. His head throbs, and with every thump of his heart, Ellen's words ring in his ears. Spineless jellyfish. Moe's spineless jellyfish. Ellen, Ellen, please, I didn't mean it. Forgive me, please. 
District Attorney Banning sits at breakfast with his attractive wife, Marsha. Marsha is Clyde's stepmother. The District Attorney scans his morning paper as Clyde, pale and worn, slips into his place at the table. Hmm. What do you think of that? What is it, Henry? Jim Blake's daughter was found dead on the Ocean Highway early this morning. Oh, they found her on the Ocean Highway? Oh, good morning, son. How have you been? Oh, I guess I overslept. Really? <laughs> Looks as though you hadn't slept at all. I have a big evening. Too much champagne? No, no. Gee, that's terrible about Blake's daughter. What happened to her? I think she was thrown out of a car. Probably some enemy of Blake's. I dare say he has plenty. Thrown out? Does it say that? Yes. Well, I'd better go down to the office. Well, maybe she jumped out. Not likely. Venture to say she was pushed out all right. Why don't you have some coffee, Clyde? Help that hangover. I haven't got a hangover. <laughs> what in the name of heaven's wrong with you? You better take some aspirin, son, and go back to bed. Well, uh, you're going to the office today? It's New Year's Day. Never go down there on a holiday. I'm going down for an hour or so. Will it upset your plans by any chance? I haven't got any plans. And what's bothering you? Something's wrong with you, Clyde. Nothing's wrong with me, and nothing's bothering Just me. Just a moment. Who are you shouting well, at? I'm not shouting at I think you'd better go on back to your room go to bed. You're a bit too unpleasant to suit me. I'm sorry. Sorry, Marsha. That's all right, darling. I'll feel all right after a while. I guess I did have too much champagne. I've never seen Clyde like this. Well, you've only been around him a year, Marsha. He's a moody type, has spells, but he's a good boy. You'll learn all his little quirks in time. Well... I'll run along, darling. Be back in an hour or so. I beg your pardon, Mr. Clyde. Yes? What is it, Thompson? Rawlings, the chauffeur. I would like to see you, sir. Oh, yes? All right, send him in. He'll see you, Rawlings. What do you want, Rawlings? I'd like to have a little talk with you, Clyde. Well, yes? Yeah? What's on your mind? Uh, where did you go last night after you dismissed me? What business is that of yours? Well, I just thought I'd ask you. Got in around 2.30, didn't you, Clyde? What of it? Thought maybe you knew what happened to Ellen Blake. Well, I took her home. What happened after that, I don't know. She kind of put the pressure on you, didn't she? What do you mean? I heard her. Heard every word you both said. She, uh, she said she was determined to get married. So what? Well, it wouldn't be so good for you if I was to tell about last night. Oh. Well... Oh, you made a big mistake when you let me out of that car. If you let me drive her home, why, you might not be in this jam. Who said I was in a jam? I say so. What What if you do tell what you know? That doesn't prove anything. Oh, I got better proof than that. What? Ellen Blake's handbag. I found it in the car this morning. Here it is. Her initials on it, some personal effects inside. Oh, yeah? Now, I'm the only one who knows about all this. If I talk, you're certain to get a rope around your neck. I didn't kill her. She, she jumped out. Yeah? Can you prove that? No. If I tell about the argument and establish the time, you wouldn't have a chance. I didn't kill her, I tell you. How'd you like trying convincing a jury on that? No. Well. But you know, I don't have to say a word about it, Clyde. Why should you? It all depends on you. What do you want? Oh, I could use a little money. How much? Uh, two or three thousand dollars? Where would I get that much? You get a nice allowance every month. Huh? You're a dirty rat, Rawlins. I didn't like your looks when you came here three weeks ago. I thought you looked like a crook. I'll have you fired. I don't think you will. You can't afford to. Do I get the handbag? No. Not until you pay off in full. Suppose I tell you to go to the devil. And you'll be in jail within an hour. I mean business. Okay. Okay, I'll pay as much as I can each month. I don't want to wait too long. I'll try to get it as soon as possible. I want that handbag. You'll get it, kid. When I get the 3000 Good afternoon, madame. What, what do you mean, coming into my room without knocking? And how is madame today? Who do you want? I want to wish you a happy new year. What of all the nerve... You get out now, of here. Now, 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 don't get excited. I thought you might like to talk to me. What do you mean? Well, I've got a little information that uh, might be of interest to you. Information? What are you talking about? I'm talking about Clyde. What about him? Well, I was just wondering what would happen if your husband had to prosecute his own son for the uh, <clears throat> murder of the daughter of the man he's out to break. Are you crazy? What do you mean? Clyde murdered Ellen Blake. Out of the car. What? 
How do you know that? She was in love with Clyde. He was trying to shake her. I drove them away from a nightclub last evening. They had a very serious argument. And then he let me out and drove the car himself. That doesn't mean anything. Ellen Blake was killed about 1 a.m. Clyde came in about 2. Good heavens. This morning I found his handbag in the car. It's Ellen Blake's. If I were to tell what I know about it and produce his handbag, Clyde would have a rope placed around his neck by his own father. I doubt very much that the D.A. would ever be reelected. How could Clyde do such a thing? Well, he must have left and lost his head. She was pretty insistent. But you don't have to say anything about this. Oh, I, I wouldn't have to. If this came out, Henry would be ruined. That's just what I mean. Now, you wouldn't want that to happen, would you? No. Then it's all up to you. Up to me? Yes, if I cover up a murder, it might affect my conscience. I might worry a lot. But, uh... My conscience might be sad. What do you want? Well, it ought to be worth about $3,000. Three? Why, that's ridiculous. I have no such amount. Then get it. How could I explain what I wanted with $3,000? That's your worry, not mine, baby. Do you know what they can do to you for blackmail? Now, now, this isn't blackmail, honey. No, I'm not threatening to divorce someone's past. It's bigger than that. As a matter of fact, you're going to bribe me to withhold a piece of important evidence. So you see, I... Hold the aces. Get out of here. Get out. <laughs> okay. But I know somebody was a lot of dough, and I'd just as soon turn the information over to Blake as anyone else. I just want to give you a break. How about this diamond bracelet? Oh. Yeah, that'll help. But it'll be hard to get rid of. I'd, I'd rather have cash. All right, I'll give you these diamonds, and you can hold them until I get the cash. Fair enough. Hand them over. Thanks. You know, I thought I'd... Well, that you'd see things in the right way. Goodbye, honey. Get out of here. You <laughs> rotten thief. Oh, listen to her. <laughs> the days pass, Clyde and Marsha are both turning over every cent they can get hold of to Rollins. But the going is difficult, and Rollins becomes more insistent. Then one day, Clyde gets a message to visit the big boss, Jim Blake, Ellen's father. I... I was told you wanted to see me, Mr. Blake. Yeah. Sit down, kid. Thank you. Everything working out all right? What do you mean? You look a little worried, kid. I thought maybe something was disturbing your sleep. Oh, well, I've been having headaches. I think it's my eyes. Been seeing things, have you? In the dark? No, I haven't been seeing things. I don't know what you're getting at, but nothing's bothering me. Just when was it that you started meeting my daughter, Ellen? I don't know what you mean. Ah, oh, quit playing dumb. I found out about it today. Who told you such a thing? Does your father know about you and Ellen? I'll bet not. Now, look here. If you think you can stop father in this investigation by trying to frame something on me, you're crazy. You can't get away with it. I'll spill the whole thing. Oh, you will? Yes, I will. You're a crook. When my father gets through with you, you'll be behind the bars for the rest of your life. When I'm put behind bars, kids, you'll be dangling from the end of a rope. What? What are you trying to accuse me of? The murder of my daughter. Murder? I didn't kill her. Can you prove that? There's no proof that I did. I've got a witness, kid, and he's ready to talk when I say the word. Witness? That's ridiculous. Why should I want to kill Ellen? Because she was in love with you, and you wanted to shake her because you were afraid your father would kick if you married her. Your father's out to get me, and I'm determined to beat him to the draw. I didn't kill her, I tell you. Ellen left that nightclub with your car New Year's Eve. You had an argument. She wanted to get married. When she got too insistent, you dismissed the chauffeur and drove the car yourself. And out on the ocean highway, you threw her out on the rocks. I didn't, I didn't. Did you stop? Did you look at her? Her face mangled to a pulp, her body broken to bits on those rocks? I didn't do it. I swear I didn't. I've got a witness to the argument and the time element. You... You can't scare me. I just talked to Rollins, your chauffeur. He knows what time you got in, and he found Ellen's purse in the car. I, I don't believe it. Where's the purse? Rollins has it. He'll produce it when you get to trial, and your own father will have to prosecute you. Oh, I'll enjoy that. Too bad about that purse, kid. If you'd found the purse and Rollins didn't know what he knows, you might have gotten away with it. But you're stuck now, stuck with Rollins and the purse. And your own father will have to tie the rope around your neck. Rollins is a liar. It'll hold in court. The jury will believe him. He's a dirty liar. I could kill him. Uh, kill him? You you wouldn't do that. Well, he isn't fit to live. Well, you aren't either. 
But I'm going to give you a chance to keep out of the noose. I'll keep Rollins from talking if you get me a couple of letters. What letters? Your father has them. They have my signature on them. You can get them very easily. You get those papers and I'll put the quietus on Rollins. They're addressed to the county supervisor. Your father intends to use them against me. I want them. Is that clear? Yeah. You get the papers and we're both in the clear. Understand? Yeah, you understand. All right. I'll give you till tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock. You can go now. Yeah. Remember, 6 o'clock tomorrow night. Saturday night passes. Then Sunday dawns with the most startling discovery. Rollins, the chauffeur, has been found dead. Shot to death in his apartment over the garage. No evidence is discovered, no weapon, no fingerprints, nothing. Now it is late afternoon. Oh, this is a fine mess. A murder in my own home. Everything will come out all right, Henry. You're certain to find the person who did it. Oh, yes, he, he may have had some enemies. After all, we know very little about him. He'd only been here a short while. Don't you understand? I'm the district attorney. Murder has been committed in my own home. Why, if I can't bring this to a solution, I'll be a laughing stock. I'll never be reelected. We're trying to help you, Henry. Oh, certainly. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do, but this has got to be kept from the police department. Once they get into it, it'll be plastered all over the front pages of every newspaper in town. Yes. I'll, I'll have to handle this from my own office. Well, neither one of us has been out of the house, and we haven't told anyone. What are you worried about? Surely a, a man like Rollins could have had many enemies. Who knows what he'd been mixed up in? Well, Captain Stone to see you, Mr. Batting. Captain Stone. Oh, yes, I was afraid of that. All right, show him in. Good afternoon, Mr. Banning. Oh, good afternoon, Captain Stone. Well, what are you doing out this way? We uh, heard about your chauffeur. Really? And who told you? Oh, friend. Body hasn't been moved, has it? No, no, Inspector Stone, it hasn't. Mm-hmm. Still in the room over the garage. Well, come on, Skelton, let's have a look. Are you, uh, you don't mind, do you, Mr. Banning? Why, why, no. No, of course not. Well, thank you. We'll be back in a moment. All right. You know, I've got a strange feeling that Jim Blake knows something about this. Blake? Why do you think that? I, I don't know. He's just the type to think of something like this. Yes, yeah, a perfect setup for him. A murder in my own home. Nothing would please him better. Why would Blake resort to anything like this? Why? Because my dear Blake is in a tough spot. Yes. The more I think about it, the more right I think I am. Well, I'm going to have a talk with him. I don't think Blake had anything to do with it. Really? What do you know about it? Well, nothing, Father. Then please allow me to handle this in my own way. Henry, why must you be so harsh? I'm sorry, Father. I think you should keep away from Blake. Why? Why? I don't know. I just think you should. Yes. Well, when I want your opinion, son, I'll ask for it. Well, here you are, Mr. Banning. We found it. Found what? We found this revolver behind the garage. Well, no, I... no, don't touch it. We want to check for fingerprints. Oh, of course, I know better than to touch it. Yeah. Fingerprints. Maybe there are none on it. Uh, we'll check it just the same. Well, the, the killer would be a fool to leave his prints on the gun. How do you know it is the gun? We'll find out. Ballistics will know. How will they know who the gun belongs to? Maybe it isn't the gun. We already know who killed him. All we need is proof. You no. Know. Well, how do you know? Who did it? Your son did it. What? We were tipped off. My son? That's right. Are you crazy? Why should Clyde kill him? He hardly knew him. Look, Mr. Banning, you think I'd come to your house snooping around unless I had a very good reason? Where did you get your tip? Well, I... I'd rather not say. Who's his friend? Come on, you'd better tell me. I'll bring it out eventually. All I know is that we were tipped off about the murder and told who did it. Your son threatened to kill Rawlins. Who told you that? Jim Blake. He heard him say it. Where did you see Blake, Clyde? Uh, I don't know what they mean. Ask Jim Blake. Come on, Skelton. Let's check that gun with ballistics. <laughs> Hours later, boss Jim Blake stands in the study facing the district attorney. There is a tense moment as each waits for the other to speak. Well, Banning, what do you want? 
I know what you're trying to pull, Blake. You're trying to get at me by framing my son with a murder. I'm not trying to frame him. I just told the police that I heard Clyde threaten to kill Rawlings. So far, there's nothing but circumstantial evidence. Clyde had no reason to kill Rawlings. And without a motive, Clyde's in the clear. Yeah? You had a scheme in mind to force me to drop that investigation, then your scheme went haywire. You pulled a boner. What do you mean, boner? If Clyde had threatened Rawlins' life, the natural thing for a man in your situation to have done was to approach me instead of the police. Why? Well, you wanted those letters, didn't you? How could you possibly make a deal for those letters now that you've made your information public? <laughs> I'm way ahead of you, Banning. I'm not so dumb as all that. I'm still holding the aces. What aces? The ones I'll throw down for the letters. I think you're bluffing, Blake. I know why Clyde killed Rawlins. I can supply the motive. I'll admit that without the motive, he'd be in the clear. But if I spilled the motive, he'd crack in five minutes. I still think you're bluffing. I know you've got a cinch case against me with those letters. But with what I know, I've got a cinch case against your son that will send him to the gallows. Not only that, but if I do spill it, you wouldn't dare show your face in this town again. <laughs> Sounds pretty gruesome. I can't imagine what it could possibly be. I'll say you can't. Clyde is really in it, up to his neck. You really think he's guilty? Certainly, but whether he is or not, he had the motive. And the motive for killing Rollins will lead to something that can be definitely proved. You mean material evidence? I do. So in order to prosecute me, you'll be forced to prosecute your own son. Hmm, I'll see to that. Now you hand over those letters and we'll all be in the clear. Believe me, Banning, I'm not bluffing. Blake, if you're telling the truth, then we're both in a very unfortunate position. You're a crook and I happen to be a stickler for duty. I can't be bribed. You mean you'd actually prosecute your own son? I do. And if he's guilty, he can take the consequences. I don't believe he is, but I know you are. But I think you're crazy. And I still think you're bluffing. Try me. I'll call your bluff. All right. But you'll change your mind, Banning. If you don't, you're a bigger fool than I've ever come across. Let's have it. Get your son in here. All right. Marsha, bring Clyde in here. Yes, Henry. What a sap you are, Banning. Over a couple of punk letters. Huh. Duty. A lot of bourgeois. Do you want me, Father? Oh, you can come in too, Marsha. Yes, Henry. What are you doing here? Well, kid, I've been having a little chat with your righteous father. He sent for me. He's a little stupid. He wants to be enlightened. Maybe you can help him. Yeah? Clyde, I understand you paid a visit to Mr. Blake. Huh? Go on. Better tell him, Clyde. What were you doing there, Clyde? Well, uh, Blake sent for me. Why? Well, he wanted to talk to me. What about? Well... Uh, about what you've been saying. I told him what you said to me. You said about what? About Rollins. Uh, what did I say about Rollins? What did you say, Clyde? Uh, nothing. He's lying. Lying about what? We haven't said anything yet. Uh, he, he tried to get me to steal something. Steal something? No, we're getting someplace. Wanted you to steal some letters out of my safe. Yes, yes. He, he offered me a lot of money. Money? <laughs> I didn't even mention money. I didn't have no, to. Yes, he did. What inducement would money be to you, Clyde? You always get everything you want. Well, I offered uh, you something better than money, kid. But was it, Clyde? He threatened me. Threatened to kill me. <laughs> How do you like that? You're in a tough spot, kid. You better start talking. You threatened to kill Rollins. I did not. I heard you. Why did you make that threat? Well, I was just talking. I didn't mean it. I couldn't kill anybody. But you did say it. But I didn't mean it. What had you done? What did he know? Something prompted you to say it. Now, what was it? Nothing, nothing. I haven't done anything. You killed Rollins. You said you would. I didn't kill him. You killed him to shut his mouth. What did he know, Clyde? Blake's lying. He's just trying to scare me. I'll scare you. You killed Rollins to keep him from telling what he knew about you and my daughter, Ellen. What? Your daughter? She was in love with Clyde. He wanted him to marry her. He tried to shake her, but when she got too insistent, he threw her out of his car, murdered her. I did not. I didn't. Rawlins heard them arguing. Clyde dismissed him and drove the car himself. Rawlins found Ellen's purse in the car next morning. Rawlins told He's me... He's lying, lying. I told him Rawlins wouldn't talk if Clyde got me the letters, but he killed Rawlins instead. Was Ellen Blake in your car the night she died? Yes. Did you dismiss the chauffeur? Yes, but I didn't kill her. She jumped out. She jumped out deliberately. Why didn't you tell this? Well, I was going to, but... And I got afraid they think I killed her. Rawlins tried to blackmail Clyde, then double-crossed Clyde and came to me. Where's the purse? Clyde probably has it. That's why he killed him. I haven't got it. I don't know where it is. I couldn't find it. Then you were in Rawlins' apartment over the garage. Yes, yes, but I didn't kill him. I didn't oh, kill Ellen. Oh, yeah. Now, what do you have to say, Mr. Banning? Do I hold the aces? No. I'll bring it to trial. I'll find that purse, if there is a purse. And if he's proven guilty, he can pay the penalty like anyone else. And then, Blake, I'll start on you. You're a fool, Banning. You're crazy. Come in. Well, here we are, Mr. Banning. Got quite a bit of dope on this Rawlins killing. What now? There were no fingerprints on that gun, but it was definitely the murder weapon. Ballistics checked it. Well, still doesn't prove my son fired the gun. Ah, that's right. But we did manage to trace the original ownership. 
And what did you learn? Well, here it is. The gun was purchased four years ago in Seattle. By whom? By Patricia Rollins. Patricia Rollins? Mm-hmm. Did you check on Patricia Rollins? Who was she? Yeah, we checked on her. We also checked on Rollins. Patricia Rollins was your chauffeur's wife. They both have a police record. Rollins was a confidence man, three convictions. His wife Patricia was implicated as an accomplice. Anything else? Yes, Rollins disappeared into Mexico three years ago. Finally turned up here. Rollins must have had the gun in his possession. Or the wife had it. In which case, she could have killed him. Quite possible. You'd better try to locate the wife. Oh, uh, here's a picture. We should be able to locate her without much trouble. What do you mean? Good Lord. Marsha. Yes, Henry? Look at this photo. Do you know who this is? Yes, Henry. Sorry, Mrs. Banning. We'll check your fingerprints with these on police record just to make sure. You don't need to check them. They're mine. Marsha, don't. Why not, Clyde? It doesn't prove anything. Maybe somebody got into the apartment and killed him with his own gun. That's just what happened. He did have the gun, but I killed him. Three years ago, he deserted me. Later, I heard he was dead. Then after I'd married Henry, he turned up here. I knew what he was going to do eventually. But I was in love with Henry. Then when he found the purse, he used it to blackmail me. And when he double-crossed both Clyde and me by going to Blake, we determined to get the purse. But he caught us ransacking his apartment. He pulled the gun and struck me. We all fought for it. Clyde wrestled with him, and I got the gun and shot him. Why did you tell, Marsha? Why? Why not? It doesn't matter now. Tell me, did she shoot in self-defense, Clyde? Certainly. He'd have killed us both. Well, that will clear you with the Rollins charge. But what about Ellen? He still killed Ellen. Captain Stone, there's a missing purse. Ellen Blake's purse. I want it. You can start looking in Rollins' apartment. I'm going through with this, Blake, regardless of the consequences. Take a look at him, Captain. A man who'd sacrifice his own son, his own life, for a couple of measly little letters. (laughs) What a set. But District Attorney Banning, a determined man, goes through with his promise. The case against his son is in preparation. The day of the opening of the trial is set. Then the missing purse is found. And in it is a note to Clyde, written and signed by Ellen Blake. Go on, read it, Clyde. Dearest Clyde, I've tried every way to reach you. I know now that you've been avoiding me. I can't go on. I know your faults, but I love you. I can't help it. So I'm going to kill myself. I don't know how, but some way will present itself. Goodbye, Clyde. I hope... You find the happiness I've been denied. I love you, Ellen. Well, there you are. Ellen Blake did jump from Clyde's car. And Clyde, even though he did seem a weakling, was able to fight when it came to a showdown. And Marsha, because of her great love for Banning, was willing to sacrifice everything for him. So Clyde is cleared, Marsha is acquitted, and Blake is sent to prison. And that is the end of a story which might have ended very tragically had it not been for the note in Ellen's purse. Very convenient, that note. CBS has presented The Whistler. Original music for this production was composed and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. The Whistler is written and directed by J. Donald Wilson and originates from Columbia Square in Hollywood. Next week, 9.30... I, The Whistler, will return to tell you another unusual tale. Good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.